We're live on Facebook. So welcome everybody. Um, I'm Sharon Thornton and I'm going to try and make my screen. Here we go. <laughs> um, welcome to everybody. We are here this week with Free Spirits inspired by, inspired by Free Spirit Fabrics. Uh, if you're not familiar with us, go to our website. We are freespiritfabrics.com. You can find everything that's Free Spirit Fabrics at our website. Um, we welcome everyone this week. We haven't been on for a couple of weeks, so we welcome you all back, all of our fellow sewing enthusiasts, uh, quilters, uh, makers of all types. We welcome you all, all. We're really glad to have you every week, so thank you for joining us. Um, as we always say, please tell us where you're from. I'm coming in from the Free Spirit office this week. I, it, we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's uh, very warm here at this time of the year. So, you know, we're staying uh, cool inside versus very hot outside. Uh, we have a wonderful guest with us this week. Uh, we have Shanilet, Nanette Holmberg is here with us, and she's here to share a wonderful product that hopefully you all have heard of. And if you haven't, Nanette's gonna share it with us. Uh, Nanette is coming to us from Utah, and uh, Nanette, you can tell us once you get on that I'm sure it's very toasty there as well. <laughs> so uh, again, tell us where you're from. We love to know where you're tuning in from and where you're all viewing us from. Um, our focus this week, we have, uh, we're focusing on holiday. So we have many uh, artists this week that we have some Halloween. A great, great quilt behind me. This is called Hester's Hat. And this is designed by Everyday Stitches. Um, Actually, let me move my screen a little bit so you can see it. So there's the top of the quilt. And here's the middle to the bottom of the quilt. And Everyday Stitches made and designed that quilt. And that's Tim Holt's fabric. And that is from his um, Regions Beyond fabric. And these are all in quilt shops now. The fabrics that Nanette is going to be sharing with us today and the projects that she has done in the Halloween as well as the Christmas projects. All of these fabrics are shipping to stores now. They're in stores now. If you see anything here that you like and love and have to make, which we know you will, uh, reach out to your local quilt shop if you don't already have the fabric. And if they don't have the fabric, they should reach out to the local rep and they can definitely order the fabric. So we encourage you all to get making after Nanette is going to inspire us so. I would like to uh, let everyone know that uh, for Free Spirit, we have Nancy Jewell and we have Lindsay Dryden on who will answer any questions for you with relation to, you know, while we're on live, they'll be putting up links and whatnot. Um, so they'll be answering on our behalf. Uh, Nanette said that she and her team will go in and answer questions either live now or after we're live. If you have any questions, please send them because we will try to answer them live as we go. Um, Nanette might be already answering some of the questions and I might already know that the, she's going to be answering the questions, so I won't interrupt her, but if there are any questions out there that she hasn't answered along the way, we will certainly ask them uh, for all of you, so please send the questions. When you see thing, things that you really like, send thumbs and hearts, we'd love to see that as well. So we, again, we thank you all for joining us today. I'd like to thank Sarah Asby for helping me today, get me all set up and um, it, you know, it takes a team to get this all together. So Nanette, I am going to change this uh, screen to you. So I would like to welcome Nanette. Hold on. I, yep, it's you. You're on full time. Hello. So everyone can see you. So Nanette Holmberg from Chenillet, thank you for joining us. And we are very excited. Look at those projects behind you that you have oh. with us today. Thank you. We're, we're excited to be here. We have lots to show. So, and we are also in a very hot area right now. We are in the West. We are in Salt Lake City with record high temperatures. So, <laughs> so, so it's cool here. Is that what you're saying? So, well, you it, <laughs> it's nice to look forward to the holiday seasons where we know we'll have cooler, cooler weather. Right. Halloween and Christmas. Right, and that's what we'll pretend we're at today. <laughs> so uh, tell us about the projects that you have behind you. I mean, I see we've got a Tim Holtz Regions Beyond, and then you also have another one over there, Corey Dantini, The Spirit of Halloween. So 
we have three different, we actually have three different Halloween oh. traditions. We have um, Bulicious, we have a Spirit of Halloween, and, and of course the Tim Holtz um, that ties in with the one that uh, you have right behind you. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's fun about what I'm gonna be showing today is they're all so easy to do. Mm -hmm. And they all will have different techniques. We'll have some step-by-steps as we go along so you can see how the techniques are done because it is a, you know, a new way of doing some of your traditional quilting techniques. We've made it easier and faster to do. And, and now we're giving texture to your quilts. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more before you start showing? I mean, I'm sorry, I, you might already have this. Could you tell us about Chenille It and how you came upon it and how you started to develop it? Well, that, that would, that's that's another story how i how oh, I okay it. but it's but it's kind of a fun one my background is actually in fashion design so years ago i started doing wearable art and developed a technique called faux chenille which we trademarked with layers of fabric that were all stitched down and then you had to cut between the layers and it was a very long laborious project pro, uh, process but made wonderful texture well, i remember that here, in that I remember that just so you know, and there were special scissors for that. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, there, there was there were cutters, there were scissors. But as I as I taught all over the country, I would teach classes in my wearable art jackets, my faux chanel jackets, and they were three and four layers of fabric, and they were you couldn't go to Florida and California and wear these heavy outfits. So I started exploring with fewer layers. And once I discovered that you only had to have one layer to create the texture, it was one of those what if moments where I said, well, what if I had it on a roll? Yes. And that's how, that's how Chanel it began because now it's on a roll. It comes in two different widths. You can see the two different widths here. It comes in 23 different colors. And I use the different widths for different techniques. And that's what we'll be talking about today, how you're going to use. It's just a very simple product that comes on a roll and you stitch down the center of the tape. And when your project is finished, you throw it into the washer and dryer and it comes out and it blooms. Right, it looks like real chenille on a chenille bedspread. And it does, and that's why we call it chenille because it, it does remind me of the old fashioned chenille that was on my grandmother's bedspreads. That's how far back it goes. Right, now I have some from my grandmother too. I mean, they were really beautifully made. This little sample, you, you can kind of see the difference. This is the 3 8 inch stitch down. This is it washed. The 5 8 stitch down and the 5 8 washed. So that's, that's how simple it is. So we will get, get into the projects and the wonderful collections that we have that we're working with. The first collection that we're working with is the um, Boolicious. Yes, and this that's is sample. Maud Asbury. Yeah, Maud Asbury. This is a sample of some of the fabrics in that collection. Beautiful. So those are wonderful. And uh, this is a panel that I've done with raw edge applique, a trick or treat panel. And one of the things that we're doing with Chenille and, and also with Free Spirit Fabrics the, the next couple of months is going to be in our Chenille box. We have a subscription box that goes out every month and you get a project, you get fact, you know, you get fabric patterns, um, lots of goodies. And so that's something that you can um, subscribe to and, and get our boxes. But this is a fun project, this, um, trick or treat panel. And can you get in close on that so they can see the texture around the letters? Wow, I like the spider web. And I did see the ghost in the oar. Yeah, can you see that? Yes, how adorable. I love that, look at the detail. So this, this is one of my favorite techniques. And this is one that I do a lot. We're going to take a look at the step-by-step on our go from this way okay on this one now this is the you know and some fabric from the tim holtz collection mm -hmm. 
And this is one of the things that you can, there's so many things you can do with letters. We've done a wall hanging with a trick or treat. This is going to be a pillow that just oh. says glue on it. Okay. And all you do is take your letters, do it on, on this. I like to do a fusible web. So mm -hmm. I have, I have done a fusible web and put these letters down on my base for the pillow. And then the first thing you do is just stitch close to the raw edge. You just want to make sure that that raw edge is caught so that it doesn't come up after it's washed. Right. And once you've done that, you're just going to cover that edge with the three. Now this is where you're going to use three eighths. Chanel it. Can you see how that's stitched down just down the center of the tape? Yes. And on the B, a couple of things that you can see on the, on the B is where you turn corners. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just come down and cut it off and start again and go around. Oh, I see, yep. And the other thing you can do if you don't want to cut it, you can just flip it. On the in, inside of this B, I've just flipped it and kept coming around. There's no right or wrong side to the product. Mm -hmm. So you just keep sewing. So Nanette, this is actually, as I'm looking at this, this is very forgiving. So if you sew down, you know, like the letters like you have here and that you said to do, if you're applying the chenille and you don't ha have it like exactly an eighth of an inch or whatever the measurement is on top of that, it's okay, right? Because absolutely wash it, it, you know, it's just very forgiving if you're a little wiggly around a corner or something. Well, and you can see, I mean, you can see with my stitching here, I mean, I've used a contrasting thread so you can see the stitching. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Right. Um, because it's going to bloom up around that stitching. Right. Now, when you put that in the wash, do you recommend to wash it prior at the end of the project or like right now, like if you had finished this piece right now, would you wash it now? And is it only one washing to get it to bloom or is it multiple washings? Um, Everything that you see that you see here today, I've just washed once. Oh, that's awesome. Now there is there is a little bit of a trick to it. The best way to wash it is an agitating washing machine. It right. needs to be it needs to be roughed up a little bit. Right. So if you have if you have a newer washing machine, mm -hmm. the new ones new ones really don't do much. <laughs> right. So put something in with it. Put some tennis shoes in with it. Put a couple of towels in with it. I because it. It, it needs that action. rubbing yeah it needs the rub yeah. to yep wow that's so, cool but i but you want to wash it when it's completely finished okay so like on like on this pillow one of the other things that i do with my pillows that you'll see um when we get to the christmas quilts is you can also finish the edges with the chanel instead of binding yes that's what we all want to know about too i can assure yeah. you that <laughs> so we'll so we'll see a couple of examples of that. So that's yes. how simple that's how simple the raw edge applique is. Now yes. we'll move on to the spirit of Christmas. I mean, spirit of Halloween. Excuse me. That's, that's uh, right. spirit of Halloween. <laughs> Getting my holidays confused. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a really fun quilt to do because it is so easy. Um, she has. Um, this is Corey Dantini. This is Corey Dantini's. And that is so simple because it's already printed. It's a panel. Right. And so all of these, this whole piece is one piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. But by adding the chenille, again, I'm using the 3 8 inch chenille. By adding mm -hmm. the 3 8 inch chenille just on the lines on the fabric, mm -hmm. it makes it look like it's all been pieced. Wow. Doesn't that look like it's a pieced quilt? Yes, it definitely does. And then what I've done with her collection here, I mean, she has some wonderful coordinating fabrics. We've got some of them down here um, to show you some of the great coordinating pieces that we've used. I've created a wide border for this quilt mm -hmm. to go around it. And she has another um, you know, panel-like um, piece in her collection that has these big squares on it. Mm -hmm. So those were perfect to take and use for my cornerstones on my quilt. Right. 
And then I've taken some more of the prints from the centerpiece and added them to my border. And those again are just raw edge applique that I've put on top of my border. So none, none of this is pieced. This is just another raw edge applique on top. Wow, it's really fun, fun and easy. <laughs> and this is, a, this is a quilt where we have used the 5 8 inch to finish the edge. And we'll show you exactly how, how you do that when we get going a little farther. But that, that's so much easier than binding mm -hmm. <laughs> and so much faster. And it gives you a soft edge to your quilt. I mean, you can imagine, I mean, it's wonderful for a throw. I mean, if you've got something by your TV, and, you know, to have that soft edge instead of a hard edge of a binding, it's, it's really kind of cozy and, and nice to have the chenille edge. That looks fantastic. Je Jessica, could you just go back to that and back out just a little bit so we can get one more view of that? Jessica, I forgot to announce you in the beginning. Jessica is here filming with Nanette. So apologies and thank you for being there. Of course. <laughs> that looks beautiful. Very nicely done. So, you Isn't know. Isn't that a fun quilt? I mean, that's just the fabrics in that collection are just so fun. Right, it, it is, it's very beautiful. That's, so that's Corey D'Antini, the spirit of Halloween. And our quilter, if you want to just get one more close up of this, Jessica, um, our quilter had fun with this print too, because you can see how she's actually used the prints of the fabric. Yeah, so I was looking at that. To determine how she quilted everything. I, you know, Ruth Davis did the quilting on this and she did just an amazing job. She did. I saw that earlier and yeah, it's Isn't that great. You know, very nice. Very nicely done. What is her name? Ruth Davis? Ruth Davis. I have Ruthie quilts and she, um, she's done, she's done, she did this quilt and she also did the Tim Holtz um, Halloween quilt that you're going to see next. Okay. Well, thank you, Jessica, for bringing us back. Ooh, look at this one. Very nice. So this is Tim Holtz, the Regions Beyond collection. This is his this is Regions collection. Beyond. We decide, I decided on this one to go with something that was not, um, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a Halloween collection, but it's, it's a collection that you can really use in so many different ways and it doesn't have to be really Halloween. <laughs> right. I mean, and that's that's what I did with this quilt. I mean, this is this is a, a di just a simple diamond design. Um, right. And diamond, you know, you can find diamond design tutorials all over um, YouTube and make those diamonds whatever size you want. I decided to go big and bold with my diamonds. Mm -hmm. And so the background of this quilt is just a simple diamond design, but I wanted it to have an argyle look. Well, it definitely looks like Argyle, yes. So, so the chenille is what's giving this quilt, taking it from just a diamond quilt to an Argyle. Mm -hmm. So all we did, and, and actually Ruth, people ask this question all the time too, can you sew the chenille down while you're quilting? Well, that's how the chenille got on this quilt. She stitched this, the, all the chenille down on this as she was quilting the quilt. Wow. Very nice. And her quilt is beautiful this one, in this too. And on this one, we've used uh, two layers of five A's for the Argyle. And look at the, look at all the tech. I mean, two layers gives you a lot of texture. Wow, right. Look at that. So that, that two layers of the five eights you said? This one is the five eights. Okay. So you can see that gives you a heavier, fuller, texture and then we also finish the edge of this again with the 5 8 inch very nice and well we will get into the detail of that later too but um i i just love this quilt i think that i mean that would just be great on a bed or as a throw you can do it whatever size oh. you really really a fun collection yes absolutely that's beautiful you did a beautiful job with that the collection it's so nice yeah it has it has such great it was hard to pick which prints i wanted to use in my diamonds because there were so many great prints well you did a nice job <laughs> you picked some great ones are you ready for christmas of course we're ready for christmas well we're not really ready for christmas but of course we're ready for christmas <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, we are going to start with another Tim Holtz collection. This is yes. his Christmas, Christmas time collection. Wow, look at that. Isn't that a fun quilt? I think you saw this before it was washed. I did. It looks fantastic. So, so you know, so you understand how how it how it changes going from putting the quilt together to when you throw it in the washer and dryer and or just waiting, waiting for it to come out of the washer and dryer. <laughs> right. Wow. Look at that. A quick step by step with this one for you. We're, to do this design, I'm starting with 16 inch squares on the quilt. And it's it's very similar to our Venetian windows quilt that we do. We start with the square and we fold it in half and then we fold it in half again. So I've got two folded edges on my square. Okay. Uh -huh. And then I take our template and these edges go on the fold. And then I just take a pencil or a pen and draw that design. But again, this has to be folded edges. So it's almost like making a snowflake. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see how it changes. So then when we, when we cut that out, we end up with two pieces like that. Okay, doesn't look like our design yet, does it? <laughs> Not yet, I'm waiting. Then, <laughs> I know it will. <laughs> then, then when we open those pieces up, look what they do. Wow. Can you see how that's kind of like a snowflake? Yes. So when I, when I open this up, I have an inside and an outside piece. Mm -hmm. And I take my, and I, then I switch them out. And so it's really fun to play with your prints and play with what's going to go inside and outside. So that's what I've done here. See, this was the outside piece. This was the inside piece. Mm -hmm. Then that just goes down on, on your block, your quilt block, or you could use this design for a pillow. Now, in this case, I'm not using fusible web, OK? because of the way we've done this design like a snowflake. But I want these pieces to stay down on my base and until I have, you know, until I get them stitched down. So all I use is a water soluble glue stick. Oh. Okay. So nice. I'll, I'll get this in position where I want it and then I'll just lift up these corners and mm -hmm. I'll glue those down really well. And once I have those in place, I might add a few pins. The thing that's really critical on this type of a design, uh, on this one or our Venetian windows, is that you really cut accurately. Don't try and do it fast because this centerpiece, each one of those needs to be cut exactly the same. Right. So that when I switch it out, they're gonna fit. Right. Does that make sense? You yes. can see how they're butted up right next to each other. Right. So and on this one, I have, I have two lines of stitching. I have to stitch this one down and this one down. Right. And that's still all raw edge. Like you said, there's nothing. Right. We're just doing all raw edge so that we can apply the chenille in on top of it. Right. And here I started stitching my chenille down. And you can see again how I'm doing my corners. When I get to, see, there's a corner. Mm -hmm. All I do, I just, I don't take my, um, piece out of the machine. I just lift up the presser foot and put that next piece down and start and go around. So Nanette, that's actually a question that we have. So um, in, in this instance, so are you saying that you just leave the chenille it down as you're sewing and then you get to a corner or a intersection, what are you doing there? Are you clipping it or do you just continue over on top of? Right, I mean, you can, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I, say I'm stitching this piece down right here. Just, right. Before I get, just before I get to that corner, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take my next piece and put it right on top of that. 
and just come down and stitch over that. And then I can just turn my machine and go the other way. So I, I, it's just one long continuous piece. I'm not starting and stopping my machine at all. Okay, but do you have to cut all of those pieces individually? Or are you just saying you're- uh... I just cut it as I go. Okay, so you're when I get cutting almost, and cutting? Right, when I get almost to an end, I'll cut it just slightly beyond the raw edge. Can you see how that's cut just slightly beyond the raw edge? Yes. So I mean, and I'll cut that when I'm back here, just a little ways, and then I'll lay this down. And we have a YouTube video on the Venetian window that shows this technique. So if uh -huh. anybody wants to go back and really see how that stitched down on, on the YouTube video, I'm doing it at the machine. Uh -huh. So you can kind of see a little bit better. Okay. Uh, and when, you, and like I said, you can either cut it and turn it or on this corner, on the points of, of my star here when i come up to this point all i'm doing all i'm going to do is flip it i'm oh, just going to make a fold yeah so then it's really easy to just come up to that fold turn around and come down right so, so that's another, very easy yeah that's another way you can do a corner right but it's all just one continuous piece i'm not starting and stopping my machine we like everything to hear that I do, everything <laughs> i do just to make it easy yes that's what we like, Nanette. Thank you. <laughs> yes, but, but you can, then you can see the final result. And when that's washed and dried, look what that does to that design. Wow, that's awesome. So you're really being very thoughtful and useful of all these fabrics. You know, it's like you're almost creating a little jigsaw puzzle. You're cutting them out and then re, you know, repurposing them in, within other uh, blocks. No, there's no waste. And like I said, it's really kind of fun because I mean, if, when you look at the quilt, when you stand back and look at the quilt, I'll show you where, I mean, you'll be able to see how, um, okay, for instance, okay, so this was an inside of one of my squares that I cut. Uh -huh. And down here is where I've used the outside. Right, yep. So it's, it's, it's fun to put this on your design wall and, and switch them around until you get it exactly the way you want. Nanette, did you say, so this is one layer, the Tim Holtz regions beyond that you showed us previously, you had two layers of chenille it, and this yeah. one for Christmas time is one layer of chenille it. Yeah, you can, you can see how much lighter that is around the edge. Right. Now, one thing you can do, um, and I went back and I did that on this one because I wanted, I wanted the effect of both ways. Actually, after this one was completely washed, I thought, oh, it might be fun to have it heavier on the inside than the outside. Oh. So I went, I went back and added another row of the three eighths. I just pushed the wash piece aside uh -huh. and stitched another layer of the three eighths down in the center. So can you see how the, the center looks heavier? Yes. So you can go back, you know, and so you can, after it's washed, you can still add more chenille if you want. Right. Could we see the back of that? Uh-huh. Just want to see. So, yeah, so I've used the. Right. I'm just seeing, so you can't really see the stitching. Well, I mean, you'd have to look really close. I mean, you can kind of see where I've gone back, where the straight lines are, is where I've added more chenille. Right. Well, it looks great. <laughs> On I mean, top of my quilting. Right, exactly. So it's. And if, you, and if you do want to do a traditional binding on this quilt, we've add. I did a traditional binding. But uh -huh. then I still like to add, now this is a three eighths inch strip. Mm -hmm. I've taken a piece of three eighths on top of that seam and it, it frames my quilt. It just finishes it. It gives it the detail. Yes, that's very nicely done. And again, very forgiving, just in case. <laughs> it's, such, it's such a great product, uh, Nanette, I love it. Well, we saved, we saved our, our you know, really one of our favorite Christmas quilts for last. This one is the Ooh. snowflake quilt. And we decided not to finish the whole quilt before the show so that you could see, see it on the design wall with all the chenille before it's washed. Oh, that's awesome. But now, now show them the pillow. Look at that. I love that. Look at the texture of that snowflake. Yes. That's what that whole quilt's going to look like. So this is uh, Tula Pink's Holiday Homies collection. 
And this too is shipping and in stores. Um, look at yeah, how great that is. Some of the collection. We've got some of the collection. It, it's wonderful. This is flannel. So this is perfect for the snowflake quilt. Exactly. Because of these, are super soft. So it's a beautiful flannel collection. And you can see Nanette showing us now, or Jessica is showing us now the close up of the snowflakes prior to washing. And then I'm sure she'll show us again what the pillow looks like after it's been washed. But how comfortable would that quilt be? Is that cozy? <laughs> yes, that's very cozy and a wonderful gift or a gift to yourself. Well, and that's what I, well, and this, this is a great block. I'll show you the block really quickly too. Look at so that. You, so you can see the step-by-step step on this because this is super easy and you can, you can take any snowflake design and do this, get on Pinterest, get on, um, you know, on online and find a snowflake design that you really like. But to do this snowflake, all I've done is taken a square. So this is a great one for a pillow too. Like you said, if you're making a gift, we're gonna do some tote bags with this one. Uh -huh. um, you fold it in half and all you have to do to mark your block is to, is to press it. So I pressed it in half, then I fold it and press it in half again. And then I press it on the corners so that I have my diagonals. Mm -hmm. So can you see? So that's my guide. That's oh. how my guide is. Wow. That's all I have. That's all I have to do to mark my block. This one is so fast and easy. It's crazy. Okay. <laughs> but to do this particular snowflake, I have 14 inch strips and four inch strips. And I'm using a double layer. That's why that snowflake is so fluffy. So I have a double layer that I'm stitching, centering that over those folded lines to create the middle of my snowflake. And then the four inch strips, I just take two of those, okay? Fold it in half. I have marked on, and all of this is, all my markings are gonna disappear when it's washed. <laughs> that's the other thing that's nice about the chenille. So I can go ahead and mark my placements and that's all just gonna disappear. And then to do, to do my, I just fold that piece in half, line it up on my markings. And then you can see how I have stitched those down. That's all there is to it. Wow. That's awesome. So you and said got two layers, right? Two layers of the five eighths? Two layers, two layers of the five eighths for the snowflake. Okay. How, how fast and easy is that? Yeah, oh, I love it. I mean, um, you, you've definitely inspired me. I'm making some gifts for myself and maybe some lucky people. <laughs> well, and it's, and the thing that's fun about the Chanel when it's finished, when you give that to someone, they are gonna think that you really spent a lot of time on that project because they, right. they can't figure out how you did it. Right, right, that's awesome. So uh, Nanette, would you ever recommend when you're sewing down the middle of those, when you're creating those, do they ever have to be sewn twice or is it a smaller no. stitch that you're using when you're sewing it? Is it regular length? I, I, use, I just use like a 2.0 stitch length uh -huh. on, on the star pillow. I go down to like a one and a half because I want to make sure that those raw edges are stitched down tight. But the chenille itself, you know, like a 2.0 stitch length, it's gonna bloom and cover up all your stitches. Right, like that, definitely. Yeah, like that. but I just, I just do, it's just one stitch down the center. You don't have to do a second. I've never done a st second stitch. All right, so that's secure enough the first time, but I like the tip that you shared that, you know, once you've washed it, if you feel like you want more fullness, you can definitely go back in and add some more. So that's, that's well, too. The, other thing, the other thing that can happen sometimes, especially if you haven't done it before, and especially on these centers um, where you're covering up two raw edges, you're not just covering up one raw edge, you're covering up two. So after it's washed, you may find a place where maybe you didn't have it centered right over both of those raw edges. Uh -huh. So that, that's another time where you can fix that. 
Right. We just pull that back and stitch another piece over where it shows and take our little, we have a little brush, just a little brush like this. Uh -huh. I can go back and then I can just go back and fluff up that edge. Whoops. <laughs> I dropped it. Um, what, what kind of brush is that, Nanette? Is that like a wire? It's a little wire brush that we have on our website and it's works. It, I, I found that it works just perfect. Um, all, all you need to do is release those fibers. Mm -hmm. So it just, it just pulls those fibers up and releases them. You don't want to brush it really hard. You pull all the fibers out, but it's, you just brush it lightly enough to release those fibers. That's all it takes. So Nanette, if, so if we've washed it, whether you have a front loader or a top loader, Either way, it has to be agitated. When it comes out of the wash, is it automatically, for the, for the most part, I mean, I see the brush that you have, and obviously right. you have that for a reason. Would you say that for the most part, it is already nice and fluffy, or do you have right. to go in afterwards and use that? No, no, this, this is just for, oh, I might, I might want to go into something and, you know, Fluff some, if I find an area that didn't fluff as much as I wanted it to, right. then I go in with this little brush. Right. But uh, like I said, this, you know, all the quilts that you've seen today are one wash, one dry in an agitating washer. Wow. That's very and you can always go the laundromat. A lot of laundromats still have agitating washers. Right. Right. <laughs> so I mean it's not like the chenille, it isn't like the rag quilts where you get a mess in your washing machine. That that's I want to make a point of that too. It's not like a rag quilt because mm -hmm. you're it's perfect bias. So you're stitching down the center of the tape, you're catching every thread. Right. But if you want, if you just want a, you know, access to a washer that has agitation, go to your laundromat for the first wash. <laughs> right, right. Yep. That's another possibility. Or just throw a pair of tennis shoes in with it. That works too. Right, it's very good tips. Um, let me see. So we're getting some questions in that I just wanna see if we can answer, hold on. Questions about the quilts. We might have to review the quilts one more time before we leave. Um, okay. They're asking about the pattern. Uh, let me see, is that pattern and template available for the Christmas time quilt? So do you have these patterns available on your website? They will be. I mean, these are all, you know, these are all upcoming. I mean, they will be posted on our Instagram page and our Facebook page when those patterns come out. Some okay. of these, some of these projects are going to be in our uh, subscription box. So okay. those patterns will come in the boxes as well, but they will be. Um, the, the YouTube channel is great too, because we do have videos on a lot of these as well. Okay. So can you they will be patterns. The only one um, that won't be a pattern, the only one that won't be a pattern is the diamond quilt because that's a simple, you can find that diamond design everywhere. And then we just added the Chanel to it. So it, it's showing that you can take any of your quilts, you can take a zigzag quilt or a diamond quilt and just stitch Chanel on it and it just changes the whole look of your quilt. Right. I, I love it. I think it's a wonderful product. Now, Nanette, I think you were going to give us a little tip about how to, if we didn't want to bind the quilt. So you showed us the Tim Holtz Christmas time quilt with the binding with chenille on top of it. But could right. you show us a little bit more closely the Tim Holtz quilt behind you where you didn't um, do a traditional binding, but yet it is bound, but with the chenille it. Well, and, and, and Jessica, we can show them, I think we can, let's show them on just this really quickly. Uh, on, on either a quill or a pillow top, to mm -hmm. finish the edges instead of binding, you're simply going to serge or zigzag that raw edge. So if this was a pillow top, I would, or if it was a quilt, I'd have my backing, my top and my batting, and it's all completely quilted. And then I'm going to either serge or zigzag that edge. Okay. Okay. So once that's finished with surging or zigzag, then I take two layers of the five eighths and I like to start on the back. And all I do is lay this down over that edge so that it's extended maybe like an eighth of an inch. It just needs to be just beyond that edge. Okay. And I, and I stitch that down all four sides, just down the center of the tape. Mm -hmm. And when I come to a corner, 
I'm going to do the same thing I did on the raw edge applique. Uh huh. And just lap it over like that. Yep. And stitch that all the way around. And what happens when, because I've it gone beyond the edge, can you see how it's a little bit beyond the edge? Yes. Right side, when I go to do the top side of my quilt or my pillow, I can see that back edge. And all I have to do now is take another double layer and just follow it right along that, right along that back edge, stitch down the center of the tape and I'm done. Wow. Can you show us up close the quilt and what the edge looks like again? So that's a, a, a quilt that, is it on the back of this one too, Nanette? Yeah. yeah see? Uh, that is so awesome. I mean, now if I want to, I could actually pull that apart. See, there's my riot, there's my surged edge. Right. So, I mean, I just, didn't that just gets it, up. Nanette, if you didn't surge it or zigzag it, it would still just get all shaggy, right? Now you don't want to do that because what, this is the problem with the, the rag quilts. Right. Because that's straight, that's a straight edge. It's not going to bloom like the chenille. It's going to shred. Right. Okay. You're going to get, you're going to get threads. You're not going to get texture. Right. You're going to get a messy thread. Okay. So you recommend really finishing that edge, whether it be a Absolutely. or a zigzag yeah. and then apply. The Absolutely. Shirt. Or you'll have threads coming out of it and it won't look nice. Right. It'll be just a mess. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I like that. It's that's a nice why, easy way. I mean, I, you can get the effect of a, of a, a rag quilt by just sewing your blocks together and sewing a, a one, either one or two layers of the chenille it down over the seams mm -hmm. and finishing the edge with this and you don't have to do any clipping and you don't have to do any cutting and you won't have a mess in your washer. Right, well, we are, yep, we like all of those tips, Nanette. About how big is that quilt? Do you know roughly what the size of that is? Um. You could be a guessing lady. What do you? Yeah, I think I think it's about seventy-five by eighty-four, something like that. Mm -hmm. you and know, it, so, it, I wanted it to be big enough that it could go on a quilt on a on a bed top. If I, you know, if I wanted right. to do that. Right. It's very nice. It's beautiful. Can you show us the thankful pillow down there too? Sure. Well, and that's another thing you can do is just uh, is do words. I mean, you can do any kind of a word on a pillow. So on this on this Kim Holtz pillow, instead of doing riage applique, I could have used the five eighths inch and just written a word on it. Mm -hmm. So you just use your that's, rest. What, that's what we've done on this. Let's show them this really quickly. This um, this is another tool of pink. This isn't a holiday, but this is another example of how you can write. Oh yes, let's see this. On a quilt. So speaking of writing. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can see how I've just written out handmade with love um, in the on the center panel of this tulip paint quilt. Yes, very nice. Another wonderful way of showing how beautifully the chenille it works with free spirit fabrics. That looks great. And this is another example of an inside and outside piece where we've done hexagons. Mm -hmm. And so this is the inside and the outside, and then they get switched around. And uh, I do that a lot with my Riage applique. You can do some really interesting designs with that technique. Wow. It's very nice, Nanette. Very, very nice. And then do you have an Anna Maria quilt there too that you wanted to show us? Uh, yeah, I'd love to show this. This because this is another this this is another great way of showing how you can use how you can use your fabrics. I mean, this this fabric print was so amazing that I, I didn't want to cut, there was no way I was going to cut this up. Right, right. So I used it almost, I used this like as, as if it were a panel. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is her print. And all I've done is stitch the three eighths inch chenille it and embellished her designs. With the shape. And, and then used another one of her prints to create a border. Wow. That is so, you know, you, nice. I, I love to have fabrics can be so inspirational just by themselves that mm -hmm. you don't really have to do anything with them. 
but add the chenille up. Wow, that's really awesome. Very beautiful. So creative, Nanette. You do a beautiful job. Definitely inspired me today. I hope we've inspired many others as well. So I hope we've given you some ideas. There's so many techniques and so many ways you can use it. I, I think that, you know, it, it's just fun to play with. Yes. And it's one of those kinds of things that you'll, you'll look at a piece of fabric or look at a design and say, what if I did this? Mm -hmm. um, Nanette, could you just tell us a little bit more about the box, your monthly subscription and how, if anyone was interested in that, how they would go about signing up? Yes, the box, the, our box comes out the 20, that ships the 22nd of every month. And, um, and we've had projects in there from wall hangings to, to throws, to pillows. You learn a new technique, you get a stat, you build your fabric stash and your chenille stash with every box. And it's discounted, you get 65, at least $65 worth of product and patterns and chenille in every box and it's just $49 and you can get that on our website. This is how the box that comes to you every month. Wow, that's a nice surprise every month. And the next couple of months will be free spirit fabrics. So wow. we'd love to hear that, Nanette. <laughs> <laughs> so this trick or treat project right here, this is uh, which month? This will be, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, this, nice. this will be this will be the July box. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do it. No, that's no, that's okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Spoiler alert. Cheers. <laughs> but I mean, the, I, such a fun fabric collection and you get everything in there to do this while hanging. So, yes. So that's Maude Asbury and that's gorgeous. Yeah. So that's very, very nicely done. Um, Nanette, for the chenille, like your rolls, whether they're three eighths of an inch or they're a half an inch, Roll. If somebody was going to buy, as you have them there, how many yards roughly is on a roll, and what could be made? Um, like the argyle quilt, would you need how many rolls to do that argyle quilt behind you? Or yeah, you, it would take a couple of rolls because I'm using a, a, a double layer on the argyle quilt. You'll use um, you. You can almost do the math on the edges because it's four times the circumference of your quilt. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, you can, there's 40 yards on a roll of the five eighths. Okay. And 20 yards on a roll of the three eighths. Okay. That goes a long way. So you can do a lot of blocks like the Christmas time. Um, you know, you can eat, probably do all those. I think I did all those blocks just with one roll, but then I went back and did a second layer. So then I used two. Right. But it looks, it's worth it. I mean, it looks beautiful. But, the, but 40 yards goes a long ways. Yes, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, Jessica, could you just show us one last time before we sign off? Would you mind just going around the room one more time for everybody to see all these beautiful projects that Nanette did? So we've got the trick or treat there and that was in Maud Asbury, Boolicious. And then we have this one here. This is Corey Dantini, The Spirit of Halloween. And then this one here is Tim Holtz, Regions Beyond. Love that. We love them all, Nanette. Beautiful job. This one coming up is Tim Holtz, Christmas Time. And then this last one here is Tula Pink, Holiday Homies, and that's in flannel. And everything looks- We'll be posting, well, I, I'm going to finish, now I'm going to finish this snowflake quilt. Oh, yes. <laughs> we'll that posted on Facebook and Instagram so everyone can see what that looks like when it's all blend. Right. So Nanette, you were kind enough to do a giveaway today. You're gonna do a uh, monthly subscription. Is that what you said? One of your- um, Yes. The we'll box? Do, we'll do the box today. Okay. For some um, is winner. <laughs> Right, there will be a lucky winner. I'm gonna, um, do, do you wanna ask a question or do you want me to ask the question or? Um, you, you pick, that's okay. Let, let's see what you would ask. Okay, so what we would like to know for the lucky winner of the box for uh, Nanette's Chenille product, um, what did you uh, enjoy most about today's presentation? 
did you, you know, did you learn something and what did you learn and which collection or collections do you love and you will likely um, go get? <laughs> so we'd like to know what you saw today that you enjoyed seeing the most. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to change the, the view here. Let me see. Oh, I want this to be so we're both on the net. I don't want to be spotlight video by myself. Okay, good. I think we're both spotlight video now. I hope. Um, well, Annette, I'd like to thank you for being with us today. Um, you have a wonderful product. I'm so glad that you could share that with us. I know you've been working very, very hard on all these projects. I mean, as makers, we all know how much time everything takes. You've been very, very creative with all of these collections. I, I'm thrilled. We as Free Spirit are thrilled that uh, our fabrics have inspired you so. Uh, you know, this is why we have this inspired by free spirit. So we can Ab see absolutely every one of these collections in, in inspired the designs that I did every single one. Thank you. And we, we love that. We love that we inspired you. We have wonderful designers. We have gorgeous fabrics. Um, again, if everybody doesn't know, you know, look at to free spirit fabrics.com. If you have any questions on anything, um, I, wanted to just say thank you. I wanted to say thank you to the viewers. And I also wanted to make sure that I said something about the quilt behind me before we go. This is a different quilt than what I started with originally. So this quilt is called Harlequin Halloween. This one was made from Robin by Robin, Ru Robin Long of Robin Ruth Designs. And this is a Mariner's Compass. So Robin designed and made this quilt for us. And this too is in Tim Holtz Regions Beyond. And it's a very fun quilt. And if you'd like to see any more of it, you could certainly look at our website uh, for any other information on it or go to Robin's website as well to get some more information on the quilt. My head's like right in the middle of that beautiful quilt. I'll try to get out of the way. So Nanette, thank you so much for joining us. We are, thrilled to have had you with us today. And thank you to everyone that has uh, tuned in today and has seen this presentation. We will have Nanette back in the future. She has some other wonderful projects that are coming up that we are both very excited to share with you in the future. So please look for us um, for our Inspired By in the fall and potentially early next year. We have some great things planned. And Annette has even more creative ways in which she's going to show us how to use. Oh, we've, we've only just begun. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know we have. I can tell. But we're very, very happy to have inspired you, Nanette. We hope we've inspired all of you to Thank keep you. pushing, keep making, keep sewing. And if you have any questions, you know, reach out to Free Spirit Fabrics, reach out to Chenille it. Nanette and her team will be happy to ask you or to answer any of the questions that you had. So until next time, we're actually back next week with um, Inspired by Free Spirit. We have uh, Debbie Stark will be joining us again to talk about fabrics and production and how we do what we do here at Free Spirit Fabrics. So thank you, Nanette. Thank you, everybody. And until next Thanks. week, happy sewing. <laughs>